What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Seven Figure Flipping Podcast. This is Bill Allen. On today's show, I have Lyle Spann. He is a great investor. He's in Murfreesboro, Tennessee. And just a couple years ago, he was working for another real estate investor. Now he's out on his own. He's doing 20 some deals of flips this year. Uh, just spoke on stage at Flip Hacking Live in October and has some amazing things to share of some strategies he's using to find more deals and to talk about his experience at Flip Hacking Live. During this podcast, we are going to talk about how you can get access to Flip Hacking Live. So we're going to do a, a live replay for you and you can experience everything that people experienced in person or on virtual um, just just a few minutes, a few months late. So I'm really excited about that. Great opportunity for you. And we'll talk all about it on the show. I hope you guys enjoy it. My name is Bill Allen, and I'm the leader of a group of elite house flippers and wholesalers called Seven Figure Flipping. We don't brag or show off our success, but instead let integrity and stewardship be our guide. We are dedicated to helping people unlock the freedom they desperately need. If you ask other real estate investors, they will say to keep your secrets quiet. But we believe in abundance, not scarcity, and that's why we are the elite. We are Seven Figure Flipping, and this podcast is our playbook. What's up, everybody? I am really excited about this show. In fact, uh, my guest has never been on the podcast before. So we're going to spend some time in the beginning getting to know him a little bit. Um, if you're at Flip Hacking Live, you got to see his presentation, learned a little bit more about him. And if you've been inside of our community, the runway or altitude community, you've met my guest uh, many times. So um, I've got a uh, really incredible investor and honestly, just a great, a great man, great um, great dad, great husband, great family man, uh, somebody who I am honored to call a friend who lives like right down the road from me and we don't necessarily see each other as much as we should. So um, I want to introduce you to Lyle Spann. Lyle, what's up, man? Hey, what's up, Bill? How are you? <laughs> How are you? I'm well, man. How are you? Glad to be here. I am glad you're here too. Um, if, you don't, if you don't know Lyle, he is the king of dad jokes. So Lyle, I'm gonna give you the option. Do you wanna tell the dad joke right now to kick it off? Do you wanna tell it in the middle or do you wanna tell it at the end? Let's just rock and roll. Let's go ahead and do this thing on the front end. Oh. Okay, hit me with it. All right, in honor, of, in honor of the holidays, recent holidays, what is Santa Claus's favorite candy bill? I don't know. Jolly Ranchers, because it's Jolly Old Saint Nick. Come on, it's good. All right, I got it. Yeah, it's great. It's great. It's uh, <laughs> it's as good as any dad joke that you've ever told. So uh, Lyle is known as the king of dad jokes, and it's so he, he hopefully he musters a better one for the middle of this presentation, and then I'm going to let him tell one at the end. So uh, <laughs> Lyle, can you tell everybody a little bit more about you and uh, your real estate business? I think it would help, kind of give some context and framework to what we're going to talk about today. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we are uh, Sparrow Real Estate Investing is our company that we operate out of. My wife and I uh, run the company primarily. We are in three markets. Um, we flip pretty much solely flip houses. We are in Middle Tennessee, uh, the Bloomington, Indianapolis, Indiana market in Mobile, Alabama as well. So we have partners in both of those markets. I'm here in Middle Tennessee, um, as you mentioned, local, not too far away from you, uh, just a skip and a rock throw away. But we have partners in those markets and we flip in all three of those markets. So we went full time a couple of years ago um, after a flip hacking live, actually, a couple of years ago, went full time, left my W-2 and have been rocking and rolling ever since flipping, uh, I think, 27 houses this year is the number that we're going to hit. So, uh, Bill, similar to you, we are faith-based. We're very open about that. That's a huge part of our business. Um, just f from uh, everything we do, from our values to how we treat people, um, giving back to our churches and our community. Uh, it's a big part of what we do and why we feel like uh, we are existing and, and kind of going towards the mark of building wealth for our family and impacting our world at the same time. So would be remiss without saying So you, that. you said... You said, well, I, I think it's amazing. Like, and what I've seen you guys do, it's been really incredible, especially uh, where you started to where you guys are now. And it's been fun to watch the journey. When you said you went to Flip Hacking Live and kind of like shortly after that kind of went all in here, what, what, what was that event like and how did it help you kind of take that leap? Yeah, so uh, when I went to Flip Hacking Live in 2021 uh, there in Orlando, I was working, uh, I was doing acquisitions for another real estate investor. And um, we were part we were part of Flip Hacking Live, came there with some of our team, 
And uh, yeah, it, it lit a fire inside of me, Bill, that people were doing this uh, at a high level with the same kind of values and mindset that I feel like were important to me. Um, the world I the, the the world I was exposed to wasn't as focused on people as much as it was, um, you know, just some other things, bottom dollars, and and you know, kind of growing the business. So uh, when I left that role, uh, I knew that I wanted to you know made the decision to pursue this on my own. And Flip Hacking Live was a huge game changer for me, being exposed to not only people who are doing this at a high level but have a big focus on people, but very open with content. Um, you know, it wasn't just one of those, one of those events. And I've had other people ask me when I've told them about the, these events, like, is, am I going to come here and they're going to give me like a little gold nugget and then tell me, Hey, sign up to get the rest of the value that you want. Like, you know, pay for this or pay for that. You guys, it was incredible, uh, you know, content that I got and walked away from. So uh, actually at that point, you guys only allow people to sign up in October at that point, runway wasn't open, you know, throughout the year. So um, I knew I wasn't going to get started full time on my own until January of the following year. But I went ahead and signed up uh, to be part of the runway program, knowing that I wasn't going to be terribly involved for a couple of months because I didn't want to miss the opportunity to jump on um, on board. So uh, I oh, knew going. I never knew that. Yeah, I knew going at this on my own, I, I would need the resources right to help me fill in the gaps and to kind of help me get to the next level. So. I jumped on and I think Dave spoke to Dave on the front end, Dave Morrison told him I may not be in accountability groups and super active for a couple of months, but I didn't want to, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to join. So that's kind of where everything started for us. Nice. Well, a lot of times you, you got to build that foundation anyway. So a lot of people try to jump in, hit the ground running and they, they get like overwhelmed or frustrated that it's not happening fast enough. A lot of times you got to build that foundational knowledge too and and absorb some of that before we can actually run. So you spoke at the event this year. What was your presentation about? And what are some like just a couple maybe high level bullet points that uh, that you could share about it? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I spoke mostly on networking and building relationships and leveraging those um, in a real estate investing business. So I kind of covered several different aspects, but mainly generating deals and raising private money, leveraging your network and, uh, you know, the relationships that you either already had before you get involved in real estate investing or, you know, building new relationships to, to kind of help you generate leads or get private money. Um, a couple of strategies that we use heavily in our business, we don't do a ton of direct to seller marketing. We don't spend a lot of marketing dollars for our deals but we invest a lot of our time in building relationships with realtors, wholesalers, uh, people in our world who, um, you know, see properties regularly. Uh, I mentioned in my presentation, I got a buddy of mine who's a police officer that, you know, he's driving around all the time. He sees properties. So, you know, there's, there's times where he'll shoot me an address and I'll check and see if they're interested in selling things like that, leveraging your network and relationships. A couple of key points is that I kind of talked about on there is social media. I hounded that one pretty hard is being, um, you know, having exposure and letting people know what you're doing. You never know in your network who is going to either have money, they, they're interested in investing in a deal, who may know, you know, their second cousin's uncle's twice removed, you know, stepson, um, who is, has a property that they're interested in the cash offer for. So I hit uh, social media pretty hard on building relationships there. And also, um, you know, just, just leaning into the people in, in your world um, that, that you're connected to, whether it's family, friends, um, and, and making sure that you leverage those relationships, um, before you have to spend a ton of marketing dollars. You know, there are a lot of things you can do just using your network and your network is your net worth. I mentioned that too, right? I didn't coin that phrase, but I love it at the same time. We, we live off of that quite a bit. Yeah. It's funny enough. I, I have a, my neighbor down the road, um, she, I, she became a licensed real estate agent. That's probably going to been a couple of years, probably like two years now, maybe longer. I, I have trouble with time, but I remember when she was getting going, like getting her license, ramping things up. I had a deal not far from here that came uh, through our company with me and Adam. And uh, he was like, Hey, can you go check this out? And I was like, yeah, I have a realtor that could list this potentially, but we need some, we need somebody to manage it to manage the project, just kind of clean it up. So brought her along with me. We walked through it together. It was like, hey, would you help me with this? And then, so we did that project together. She made extra money. She listed it on the back end and sold it when we 
uh, when we listed it and sold it. So I was like, well, you know, she's probably hungry. She's pretty new, doesn't have a ton of clients, a lot of customers, things like that. And so, and, and we knew each other from, from the neighborhood. Our kids are around the same age. We talk and spend time together. And then just like uh, last week, I get a text message from her. Um, I had my eight figure entrepreneur group here last week. I get a message from her like, hey, there, there's a house in our neighborhood that might be a good fit for you to flip. And I was like, oh, really? Like, and so she, I'm the only one that she sent the message to. She's like, it's vacant. She told me the whole story on it. And while we were here, we just went over there and walked through it together and uh, ran the numbers and gave her a price. So like, that's the kind of thing that you're talking about, the relationships that you can build. You never know when those things are going to pay off, but it's really important to have them. Like she doesn't really know anybody else to send this to. There's nobody else bidding. It's just me. Um, or she's going to list it as is on the market. So great opportunity for me and for her to make some more money because hopefully she can manage a project for me if we get it. She can sell it on the back end, make some money on the front end, make, some money, make more money on the back end because I'll sell it for 100000 more than she'll sell it for before it gets fixed up. And it's literally right in my neighborhood, right down the road for me. So great opportunity and it's exactly what you're talking about. What you taught at Flip Hacking Live is exactly that, like the way that I would be able to build that relationship over time, develop it, nurture it, and how important it is. And then as you were talking about private money, um, my uncle had just messaged me. He just moved his money over from the stock market into a uh, self-directed IRA, and he's looking to put it to work. So it's like the perfect combination of those two things right now, of me having it fully funded, no cash out of my pocket at all, and this relationship, and it was allowed me to pay a little bit more because his money's a lot cheaper than what I'd have to get out of the marketplace. So it's just win, win, win all around. And it's using a lot of the principles and strategies that you taught at Flip Hacking Live. So has anybody, did anybody come up to you at the event and share like some takeaways that they had or um, what was some of the feedback that you got from the audience at your presentation? Um, and then also I want to know, what did it feel like to be on stage two years after you were in the audience uh, working for somebody else? So Let's start with uh, some of the feedback you got and then tell me what it was like to be on stage. Yeah, absolutely. And you hit the nail on the head, Bill. It's a, it's a win all the way around when you when you have situations like that. So, uh, yeah, I did have several people that kind of came up to me afterwards. One one guy, it was right off right after I walked, st walked off stage. I kind of went around the corner and this guy was in the hallway, he and his wife, and he stopped me and he said, hey, man, he said, hey, I just heard you speak. You, did, you know, I enjoyed it. He said, when I came here, he said, my eyes were closed like this. He said, but after you speak, I feel like my eyes are open and I can just, you know, I, I know some, some things I need to do, you know, to get out and, and leverage kind of the people that I'm already connected to. So that was just right off the bat, right? When I'm coming off stage hearing that immediately, you know, it felt good to feel like there's some value provided there. Right. Um, but several people, um, you know, throughout the rest of the event would connect with me. And, you know, a common theme was, you know, well, if I put myself out there on social media and I don't get a ton of, um, you know, I don't get a ton of likes or I don't really get anything from it. Or at the same time, they're saying, well, what if somebody does? There was two things. What, what if I don't really, nothing happens from it. And then also they were saying, what if something does happen from it? What does my next conversation look like? Right? Like, well, oh crap. What, <laughs> somebody wants to loan me money or give me money or somebody has a deal. What do I do? I'm just getting started. So that sparked a lot of great conversations. Um, you know, just like on next steps, but you, it's a good problem if you have a deal or if you have someone that is wanting to put their money to work and they approach you about it uh, and you're interested in real estate investing or you have gotten started in real estate investing, it's a great problem, right, to have, to, to have a next step to figure out what to do with those situations. So um, we talk, we, I, I spoke with those people and, you know, on the first example of what if nobody, you know, what if I don't get any traction from it? Uh, Bill, you're, you're perfect. I think you've mentioned this before too and, and several people have, but uh, I had an example of uh, this is not even necessarily the the 500k challenge, but just we're very active on social media, and I have had multiple conversations this year with people who have invested with us, um, and many of them they didn't like comment, not react to one single post, but they either had some dividends pay out, um, or they you know decided they wanted to do something else with their 401k. One person inherited a property that they sold you know, and had a, just this lump sum of multiple six figures. And because they had seen what we're doing and we're very active with, you know, funny content when we're on prod, on site with projects, right? We're showing befores and afters. We're very active in what we're doing and that we have opportunities to invest. They hit me up, right? And 
it's it's very surreal when somebody's like, hey, man, I've been following your journey for like the past 18 months. I love seeing what you're doing. And I'm like, dude, you have not commented or liked one single thing that we have done, but you're watching. People are watching. So building that confidence in people, that content is always out there and people see it, whether they react or not. It's worth it's worth the exposure, getting the exposure out there for people. And then on the back end, you know, the conversations to have once people do reach out, it's good to have a plan in place, right? You don't want to necessarily hop on the phone and, and, and have zero idea of where to take the conversation. But that's the beauty of your network as well. You don't have to have all the answers necessarily, but being around people who can help fill in those gaps and help with structure the conversations or whatever the case is, um, that's exactly what we have. So, and what we did at the very beginning, I leaned into, you know, this, this program and then others in the market as well to kind of know what to do there. So that was a lot of the conversations I had after I spoke. You mentioned funny content on social media. So I'm going to give you one more opportunity to tell a, a better dad joke. Do you have a better one? I don't know if it's better, but it is another dad joke. Bill, what do you, what do you call a, um, a belt made out of watches? I don't know. A waste of time. <laughs> okay, that one's better. I like that one better. I like that one better. Yeah, that one's not too uh, bad. I still might tell the, um, what was it? Jolly Rancher? Jolly Rancher? Yeah, and his favorite I might tell the Jolly Rancher joke to my son tonight anyway. so um, Okay. Uh, one thing you mentioned about social media is um, the fact that like people are watching and um, you're just uh, putting some information out there. The, the thing that I think that most people mess up with that is consistency. So if I can give you any advice, it's about being consistent in the face of what appears to be not making an impact, like not doing enough. So if you're, if you're consistent over time, it will grow, people will see it and, and it, will, it will work. And the thing is, it's the feedback that happens. Sometimes it takes a long time. It's like you're, just pl you're planting seeds you're planting seeds for the, like over winter, like a long period of time before you actually can harvest those seeds. So if you stop planting your seeds, you're not going to grow any, any fruit. So you've got to just keep planting those seeds. And I think consistency is where most people fail because they're like, I don't think anybody's watching this. I'm not getting me anywhere. It's a waste of time, all this stuff. Like I've been consistently, like I hired a team this year and consistently posting for the last year. And I, what I find is when we don't grow is when we're inconsistent with what we're putting out. And when we follow the plan and we're consistent, it, it's exponential type growth. And just like Lyle said, sometimes you don't even know that there's people, that, there's a lot of people watching and they might just not be saying anything or waiting for the right time or they need to see, the, they need to see you be consistent because if you're consistent in that, then they know how you're going to show up in the rest of your life, like your business and, and the places that they'll put their money. So I think it's really important. All right. What was it like to be on stage? I want to know what I just, I'm curious, genuinely curious of what it was like to be on stage just, you know, a couple of years after, like, what was that experience like for you? Yeah, it was, um, it was awesome. You know, I enjoyed it. I've never done something like that, Bill, uh, spoken in front of that, you know, number of people. It's always been smaller groups of people if I've ever done anything like that. So, um, it was a really cool experience. I did feel, I felt like, um, I felt more confident because it was something that I am confident in, right? Networking and building relationships is something very, you know, near and dear to who we are and what we do. So I felt like there was at least some value to somebody in the room that I could give. So that felt, um, you know, it made me more comfortable. Plus I told a couple of dad jokes, which uh, automatically eases the, eases the nerves a little bit. But aside from that, no, it felt really cool to, to be a part of this group. And two years ago, you know, coming to my first one, so it's three flip hacking labs ago, 2021, to come to my first one and to, you know, be in awe of some of the people speaking and some of the things going on and to see how we have been blessed. And, you know, we've put in a lot of hard work too, right? I've worked a lot of hours over the past couple of years and we have uh, taken action in a lot of different ways, but to see that this group and some of the people who I heard speak on stage have, you know, see the, the changes that they have made in our lives and then be able to at least give some small amount of value to people in a similar setting. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. So I appreciate the opportunity, by the way. I don't know if I've uh, told you that lately. So. Yeah, absolutely. You did a great job. One thing that I think about a lot is I go to all these events and um, there's, there's certain events that I've been to like years and years and years. Like I remember seeing Walter Bond speak on stage at Brian Buffini's event, like, I don't know, six years ago, seven years ago now. 
And I was just in awe of this speaker. It was like the best speaker I'd ever heard in my entire life. And now to think that we're like text messaging and like friends, it's like game changing. It's so cool where like we've become like, I could ask him for something. He's really helped me. He's come into our community and done things. And I, you know, I had to hire him like multiple times. I still have to pay him every time he comes speak to us. But mm -hmm. like, there's, it's just, there's something about that relationship now that is, it's become really cool. It's like that this person that you see on stage that is like your, like your mentor and you're in awe of then becomes your friend. It's a big deal. So I, I know what you're talking about. Like I, when I go to Funnel Hacking Live and some of the other marketing events, like the people that I've seen speak that are now my friends, it's very interesting that transition of putting yourself in the right place, opening yourself up. Obviously, like for me, it was investing in my education, investing in different programs that put me in the place and the opportunities to start getting to know these folks. They're doing way more than me. They can pour into me. And then eventually, you know, we work together and, and do enough together that we become friends. And it's really cool. I've heard the saying like, um, my, my mentors are now my friends. It's, that's like moving up the ladder and trying to figure out how you can continue to grow into a level that now you're on the same level as those people that were shepherding you and, and growing you from the beginning. So um, I totally feel that. I, I felt the same way um, after speaking on some big stages that my friend, like, you know, people, my mentors and things like that that have invited me to come speak at their events. It's been cool to see. Um, what's, is there someone who, um, who has actually implemented some of the things? So maybe there's somebody who's implemented some of the things that you taught on stage that's had some results. Maybe you can share uh, somebody like that. Yeah, absolutely. There was a, there was a young guy um, who had heard me speak about, you know, well, partially put, putting yourself out there, right? The exposure piece of it. And then, you know, a small piece of that was, you know, making offers. So if you, if you run the numbers on a property, right, if somebody, a realtor, a wholesaler, whoever brings you a deal, if you take the time to run the numbers on a property, make an offer, even if it's a verbal one, right? Run your numbers and then and put yourself out there, make an offer, follow up, things like that. So to that specific point, spoke to a guy um, after uh, Flip Hacking Live, uh, we're on a one-on-one -on -one basis, and uh, we kind of talked about this. We dove into it, and uh, the very next week, we, we scheduled another time to chat, and he's like, dude... I'm telling you, he's like, I got two properties under contract last week because I was making offers and I was building relationships with realtors, um, telling them what I'm doing. And then I was making offers. He said, dude, I'm 60,000 under list price. It was on the MLS, 60,000 under list price. They took, uh, you know, they accepted my offer. And another one I think was around 80,000 under list price. So before he said he was watching them and have having some people on his team, you know, just monitor them for like a price decrease. And, uh, and um, so we just had the conversation of, you know, have the people bring you the deals, whether you're looking on the MLS or people in your network or bring them to you. And if you take the time to run the numbers, make an offer, like throw a number out there, something that does make sense for you. You'd be surprised where it goes. So within a week's time of speaking with him one on one, he had gotten two properties under contract doing that exact thing. So uh, mm. I gave him a big old, big old pat on the back, right? Hyped him up a little bit um, for taking action and, and going ahead and just getting to work. Is this someone in the uh, runway program that was on laser coaching calls with you? It is. Yeah. Hopped on a laser coaching call with me. Yeah. And we spoke about, yeah, some of the different things from Flip Hacking Live and just business in general. And yeah, he went out and crushed it that we got two houses under contract and he's a flipper too. So it's not, these aren't, uh, you know, these weren't wholesale deals necessarily, but he was, yeah, two houses he's fixing to flip and take down. That's awesome. That's really cool to see. And so if you don't know, we have like one-to-one -one calls inside of our uh, seven figure runway program. So uh, some of the people that spoke at Flip Hacking Live are also our laser coaches. So the people in the program can just book a time to spend, uh, spend time on a call with them, the coaching call, ask them questions, dive a little bit deeper in some of that information. It's part of what we do inside of our runway program. If you want to check that out, you can go to sevenfigurerunway.com. So the number sevenfigurerunway.com and fill out an application and talk with us. I, I talk about it all the time, but I'm sure you need to just hear it over and over and over again before you're like, Hey, okay, I'm ready to just talk. Like, and those calls are, they're not high pressure. It's very much just like, where are you, where are you right now? What are your goals? What are you looking to do? What are some of the things holding you back? How can we help you? It might be, uh, hopefully the recommendation is, you know, Hey, we got this free Avenue. We got these other avenues. And then we have our runway program, which, uh, or our altitude program or one of the other higher level programs, depending on where you are. So it should always be us putting you where you fit and how we can help you the best and serve you right now and where you are. And uh, we talked a lot about the scenario-based training and simulation on the past few shows. 
Um, I'm really like excited about that. This is something I think is next level, um, uh, next level opportunity for anyone in in any coaching program, frankly, but specifically real estate investing, a, a low risk to no risk way to be able to get in front of more sellers, go through houses, make better decisions, and really figure out how to uh, how to decide, like how to how to make that decision whether you should or shouldn't do something in a way where you're not losing money. It's not high risk. You're not scared that you know you're gonna you're gonna be out of pocket tens of thousands of dollars. Um, Lyle, what do you think about that? Um, like simulation that, that we're running and some of the things that I've been talking about. Like, what are your feelings on that? Yeah, definitely a fan, Bill. I remember when you first introduced the thought or the concept of this, you know, to our group at one of the events that we had, um, very first question in my mind was how do I implement this with my team, <laughs> right? How do we take this scenario-based training that you guys are kind of going through with us and showing us, uh, how to think through whether it's analyzing a deal, like the different areas of our business, how we can simulate that and how do I, you know, give that to my team. So I, th I think it's very helpful. Um, I think there's a reason that it's done in our military and in other facets of life, right? There's a reason that simulations happen. And I don't see any reason why people don't implement those in the business side of things as well. So I am a fan of the simulations and I'm structuring that out with our team too, so that we can kind of, do some of that scenario based training um, for the different areas that we have, even down to, you know, my acquisitions guy and, and, and those things. Well, you are really going to love me because on Thursday I, um, I did, I created a training that we're going to give to you guys um, on how to train your team. So I recorded a full day training um, for the eight figure entrepreneurs. We did it live. We went through, I had three different sessions that I trained them on about how they can build out scenarios, how they can use it for their team and their staff, how to build one, how to structure it, why, uh, how to facilitate it, all that stuff. And we vid we recorded it. So we once we get it all edited and chopped, we're going to give it to the Altitude members because I think you guys need that. And then additionally, there's um, there's going to be an example on how you can do it in a hiring situation. So how can you actually do that when you're on the phone towards the end of hiring somebody to give them the final test? So we did this in our last hiring process for our sales director, and we were able to put m multiple people like who we were sure would do a good job, and only one of them really crushed the scenario-based training portion. So it was a, a great way to weed out people who talk great on interviews. You know, when you hire somebody and you're like, oh, I hope they do well. Like they talk a big game, everything seems to check out, but then you throw them in the game and you're like, Psh, man, I wish I had a tryout. Wish we had tryouts like on, on OJT, a little on the job training, on the job tryout. Um, like they do, I don't know. I wish I could take them to the combine, you know, and, and run them <laughs> through the drills and stuff. So that's what we did. And uh, we got that recording. It's about 25 minutes long. So we're gonna couple all that stuff together to roll it out to you guys here in I don't, probably just a couple weeks. So you can train your team. So you don't have to reinvent the wheel and they can, and then your team can watch it. I get their buy-in in the first presentation, get them excited about it. You can decide which, which modules for them to watch. So, um, okay, let's wrap this up. We've got a, a, a we're going to do a replay, a live replay of Flip Hacking Live that you can jump into for free. You can just sign up, jump in and, Watch the different presentations. Again, we're going to curate some of the presentations. So, um, you know, if anything was is non-relevant going forward, um, that was only for like October and November of last year, then it's going to be out. And we're only going to give you the stuff that you need right now. But a lot of these, they last their test of time. Really exciting. You can be there with a bunch of other people going through it with you. And, and hopefully you have a great experience. You take it. it. It pushes you into action and gets you to believe that you can do it. Because I think that's the biggest thing that Flip Packing Live does is it gives you the belief that you can do it. And I'm confident that all of you can, um, regardless of your background, you don't have to be in the military. You don't have to be a, a lawyer or a doctor, like some of the stuff I've been talking about. Really anybody can run this business. And uh, the whole new model, the simulation model inside of our runway program is designed to get people to take action faster and to reduce risk. We can't remove all the risk, but we can reduce the risk and we can put you in an environment where it's safe before you go out there where you feel like the risk is going up. So. I would encourage you to check that out. The description is going to be, or the link will be in the description. It'll be in your email. It'll be on social media, depending on where you're seeing this. Uh, but jump in with us. You can see Lyle's presentation, any of the previous people that I've spoken to uh, on the podcast recently. Myself, I did a couple presentations that you'll be able to see. And I'm really excited about you being able to join us because maybe you weren't able to travel or you had some overlapping 
uh, things going on and it just didn't work for you. So here's our replay for you. I'm really excited about it. I am, um, but you can jump in there for free. So uh, Lyle, how can people find out more information about you? And is there anything that, um, that I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? Uh, quick answer for um, how they can find out more about us. We do have a website, www.sparrowrei.com. We're on uh, Instagram and Facebook as well. Sparrow REI on Instagram and Sparrow Real Estate Investing. Um, so that's how they can find us if they would like to. Um, contact information is there. As far as asking about me, Bill, I don't think so, man. Um, I, I will just say that you mentioned, you know, being a part of this program can kind of help reduce the risk and kind of help you get places faster. Anything in the world, right? If you have, if you get knowledge and you get resources in your corner, you can not have to reinvent the wheel. And I'm a, I'm living proof that um, this group has done that for us in our business from from nothing to 27 flips this year in 2023. So. Uh, I'm a big, big believer in that. And this is a part of the network and relationships that you can, you can leverage. Um, you covered it with the dad jokes, man. I love dad jokes. I love sports too. So you mentioned the combine. If you start making us run a 40 dash, 40 yard dash to join uh, altitude or something, we're going to have to, we're going to have to step up my, my game. <laughs> um, yeah. I don't, I don't know if that's going to work, but maybe, I don't know. We, maybe we can have a race to some amount of uh, deals, some amount of money, some amount of something. Um, hey, do you want to end it with a dad joke? I will. Before the dad joke, we, we need to put out there that if anybody wants to challenge us in pickleball, I've been playing a lot of pickleball. So people can, they, they can bring it on if they want some. So I haven't been playing a lot of pickleball, but I'm sure I'll still beat you. So I'm <laughs> more than happy to challenge you. So yeah, um, the winter good. time is my pickleball time. Once the farm closes down, then I can play pickleball again. That's what it was like last year. I went yes. like all in. I played for like four months straight. And then I was like, Okay. I, I actually have to do some work. The farm is crazy. It's all nuts. So I had to let go of pickleball for a while. So, Understandable. Um, but I'll pick it up and come back at my four Oh level. So if you're like a four five or a five Oh, then maybe you can win. So yeah, I'll, I'll surprise you. We'll see. I'll give you a joke. We'll, right, I'll give you a joke. we'll get out of here. Where's the, where's the worst place to hide in a hospital? Where? The ICU. Ah, nice. I thought you were going to say the morgue. Must All right, the ICU. <laughs> I didn't little... want to guess and be right. I thought that would be wrong. Uh, <laughs> okay, good one. That's actually, they're getting better. They're like steadily getting better. So we should probably end on a high note because they can only go down from here. Um, all right, so... Go, uh, click the link in the description in the email. If you if you're not if you are just like listening to this or someone shared it or you don't know how to get a hold of us, info at sevenfigureflipping.com. Uh, you can just shoot us an email there and we'll send you all the information about um, our replay of FHL. And you can always go to sevenfigurerunway.com, the number sevenfigurerunway.com, and uh, and put in an application to join us inside of the uh, mastermind program. It's a coaching program. It's absolutely incredible, especially with our new simulation model. Uh, we have an event coming up here in January, um, just in a few weeks at my office in Spring Hill, Tennessee. Uh, we do quarterly events. We do all kinds of really great stuff together. We do life together. We do business together and we'd love to have you and invite you in. So, uh, thanks. You, thanks for uh, being on Lyle. Thank you guys for listening. I will see you on the next show. Bye. Thanks, Bill.